quick question before we get started with the show. Do you order lab tests from companies like Dutch, DSL, Genova, or Vibrant America? Hi, I'm Dr. Carrie Jones, Head of Medical Education at Rupa Health, the absolute best place to order, manage, track, and get results from 30 plus lab companies all in one place. Practitioners using Rupa Health are saving well over 15 hours of admin time each week for their lab ordering process. With just a few clicks, you can order from 30 plus lab companies, that's over 3,000 tests for free in one single portal. That means one invoice for all labs paid online up front. Plus, patients get practitioner pricing and receive full patient support through easier personalized collection instructions, automated follow-ups, super bills, answers to testing questions, and so much more. Go to rupahealth.com to sign up for your free account today. Now, let's start the show. Welcome to Redefining Medicine, an intimate and personalized program that illustrates a different side of the practice of medicine. Our in-depth conversations will focus on the physicians and practitioners who are redefining medicine through their integrative, functional, and holistic approach to health and well-being. Our host for Redefining Medicine is Dr. Erica Schwartz. For more than 20 years, Dr. Erica has been at the forefront of advanced patient care, taking the best from conventional and integrative medicine and applying them to prevent disease. Dr. Erica is a distinguished AFRM faculty member in disciplines ranging from hormone therapy, peptide therapy, and IV nutritional support. Hi, welcome to Redefining Medicine. Today, we have somebody right off the stage to introduce to us, to our audience, to our viewership, um, Dr. John LaPuma. And he will tell us everything about things that we really need to know that will change our lives for the better. Dr. LaPuma, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks so much, Eric. It's great to be with you. Tell me about your talk. Um, this morning, I spoke with about 700 clinicians about culinary medicine. Beautiful. Uh, how to blend the art of cooking with the science of medicine to create restaurant quality meals that help to prevent and treat disease. It's amazing. So I know you're a chef. So mm -hmm. I was lucky to be trained as a chef and as a physician. Right, right. And from that career change came several interesting fields itself, one of which was culinary medicine. Michael Roizen and I the emeritus founder of the wellness clinic at the Cleveland Clinic, right. taught the first class in culinary medicine in 2003. And now about 70% of medical schools offer an elective in culinary medicine. Which is unbelievable because they never even talked about nutrition before. No, in <laughs> medical school, I got two hours. You did? Yes. I didn't. Uh, but, you know, that's still possible, by the way, to graduate from medical school well, without any nutrition. Right. And in cooking school, I got two hours as well. That's perfect. Perfect. But we're trying to help people make up for that. Of course. And to do that, this morning, I spoke about how culinary medicine has evolved as a field, what its basic principles were and are, what kinds of scientific research supports it, and as importantly, how you can make it taste really good when you help patients with their own diets. Uh, this morning, the theme was how to fight inflammation with food. And I gave people an easy acronym, acronym bites, berries, Indian spices, tea, edamame, and salmon, and talked a little bit about the importance of fermented foods as well as organic produce suggested that people visit ewg.org, the environmentalworkinggroup.org, which has a clean 15 and a dirty dozen that they publish every year about what you ought to buy organic and what you don't have to. Emphasize the importance of food with fiber for the probiotics in, in your gut that help your immunity and vitamin production. And said that people ought to avoid not just sugar-sweetened beverages, which we all know about, but also what I call anti-nutrients, which are, some of which are uh, ultra-processed food, any food that you can uh, kind of wad up into a ball and toss across the room, 
that's an anti-nutrient. Of course, we're talking about super processed fast foods and French fries and fast food burgers and stuff. So people got the sense that they could begin to fight inflammation with food as well. Which is a pretty novel idea. <laughs> it is, but you know, surprisingly effective. Yes. Um, the, we Very. showcased the PREDIMED trial where you mm -hmm. have added nuts or olive oil to the Mediterranean diet and found the reduction in breast cancer incidence, in colon cancer recurrence, improved cognition with less Alzheimer's disease uh, development, and, and also showcased some other really interesting food facts. There was a study just two months ago about wild, uh, wild blueberries, which improved cognition and memory with the uh, using an extract of wild blueberries, but the equivalent is a cup of blueberries, which is a great addition to breakfast every morning. So now that you brought up blueberries, very important, what is the difference between wild blueberries and wild organic blueberries? Well, wild blueberries ought to be organic just because they're wild. Right. No one's had the chance to fertilize them or Yet. to put cytal agents on right. them. But you bring up another important anti-nutrient, mm -hmm. food that has synthetic artificial chemical pesticides or herbicides or fungicides or insecticides. And one way to tell how to avoid food that might have been sprayed with those is to think about the food as, as it occurs naturally with its thin skin. Right. So potatoes, berries, nectarines, all will absorb conventional pesticides and other cytal agents, and those are especially important to buy organic. Right. We talked about other easy ways to make food your medicine. We uh, said that if you keep a watermelon on the kitchen counter, it stays red with the lycopene and beta carotene in it. But if you put it in the refrigerator, it turns kind of orangey pink, and that's the beta and li beta carotene and lycopene going away. Mm -hmm. If you add olive oil to tomato sauce or tomato paste, you, you increase the bioavailability of the lycopene in it and absorb more of the lycopene from the tomato. And that's one of the reasons that you add to olive oil, extra virgin olive oil to tomatoes, but you also do it because it makes them taste even better. Uh, if you, there are lots of these type of, lots of these types of hints where, uh, you know, barbecue season is coming up and if you marinate a meat, a chicken or a fish or a beef in any marinade, it reduces the heterocyclic amines, the cancer causing chemicals that are, are caused when you, when you cook a meat that's to high heat or you grill it or create a char. That's carcinogenesis on the top. But the marinade helps to reduce that production of uh, heterocyclic amines. And if you squirt with a little water bottle the flare-ups from the fat in the fire, then you reduce the polyaromatic hydrocarbons, which deposit from the fiber fire onto the meat, also helping. And if you add rosemary, to the marinade. Rosemary. Rosemary, or thyme, but rosemary is better. Mm -hmm. You also cut the heterocyclamine production by 79%. There are some marinades that are better than others in reducing carcinogenesis and, I would say, increasing flavor. And flavor is the most important part of culinary medicine. Taste, people judge. I showed a slide this morning, very interesting, for 10 years of data from the International Food Information Council that showed that people make decisions about what to buy based on taste. taste. What second do you think? Price. 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 <laughs> What's so third, right. maybe? Health. They don't know about it. Health. But they don't assume that if it says anything that sounds like it's healthy, it's OK. Right. And they don't know that that's not the case. No. I showed a very funny clip from mm -hmm. Jimmy Kimmel, who did interviews in LA. I live in Santa Barbara, as you know. Mm -hmm. It's not far from me, where the, he asked people, do you follow a gluten-free diet? And he asked five people, all look buff and great, running in the park. They all followed a gluten-free diet. None of them knew anything about what gluten was. Right. They also don't know that gluten-free products have chemicals in them. 
Yes. They don't understand, and it's a big problem. That's one of the reasons that it's so important for us as clinicians to learn a little bit about how food works as medicine in the body, about having good cooking skills, or at least passable cooking skills ourselves, about being curious about other people's palates, particularly patients. And when you see a patient who wants to lose weight, wants to control her diabetes with diet, wants to have less arthritis pain, wants to reduce her potential for recurrence from her colon cancer. When you see a patient like that, one of the keys is to understand what their culture is. Right. It makes very little sense yes. to recommend a Mediterranean diet to somebody from the Caribbean. Correct. <laughs> so yes. what we want instead is to understand the flavors that they like, right. that they eat. And I do that in a very old school way. I do that by having an eight and a half piece of paper and asking people to keep a diet log. And it's right. not so they can track their calories or even tell me how much they eat, although I do ask that, and where and with, what, and with whom. But instead, I'm interested in what the flavors are that they like, what the textures that they are. Texture is often the missing component in good for you food. Talk about that. Having something crunchy, Right. Chewy, right. that isn't mush. Yeah. That offers a little resistance, that tells you you're eating, eating. me. Yeah. Right. That's, that's exciting. It is. When you eat something. And, and that's what people need. Right. If, Do they know that? Well, good cooks know that. Right. Good cooks know that to make something flavorful, you increase the texture. And that's one reason you... Toast nuts and mm -hmm. use it as a garnish. Yeah. yeah, do that in a salad. You do it on scrambled eggs if you like. Right. Uh, uh, seeds sometimes do that. I showed a picture of my warm and nutty uh, cinnamon quinoa, mm. which I made 15 years that ago. Was delicious. Yes, it was lovely. And there's uh, people used to think about quinoa as just a side dish, you know, instead of rice, if they thought about it at all. Of course, it has nine essential amino acids. Mm -hmm. It's delicious. It cooks faster than rice, 15 minutes has a little curlicue that comes out of it, it's very cute. But if you make it as a dessert, warm and nutty cinnamon quinoa, you can use pecans instead of almonds, you can use oat milk instead of soy milk, you can use red quinoa instead of white quinoa. I taught people this morning that recipes are templates. You can just use it, make it once, and then make it your own using whatever you have in your pantry, in your refrigerator, in your freezer. Recipes are often forgiving if they're well-made. And you can leave out an agreement, ingredient or add another. And I talked about the foods that were anti-inflammatory, because you know this was in a conference about that. Mm -hmm. And I gave everybody one of these. Mm -hmm. um, one of This is a coaster with my face on it that has <laughs> basil, parsley, and chive seeds in it. Beautiful. And I gave this to people for two reasons. One, I w herbs and spices, gram for gram, are the most anti-inflammatory food group. And I do think about herbs and spices as a food group. And they ought to be, I think, at every meal in some form. The second is that this coaster and my face, and it has a little QR code on it that you can, that. can mm -hmm. scan. It'll tell you how to plant it. That's why it's there. Oh, I was going to ask you. Yeah. yeah. But I'll tell you quickly now. You can just put it in a pot um, that's about its size, a little larger. I like an right. like eight-inch pot, if you can, mm -hmm. with good topsoil. Um, and on top, a little more topsoil or compost, mm -hmm. about a quarter inch, and then water it um, every day until you see sprouts. I can't wait to do it. I can't wait for you to do it. I can't wait for you to send me a picture. I will absolutely of what, send you a picture. What your pot looks like, because this is walking the talk. Yeah. This is having chives and basil and parsley on your office counter, on your office table tells patients, I walk the talk, I like anti-inflammatory food, I think it makes things taste better, and hey, it's pretty, it's beautiful, it looks like really good health. And it's healthy. And it is healthy. It changes everything. Plus, yeah. it tastes delicious. Amazing. I'm honored. 
to I'm, have you here. I'm so Thank glad to be so with you. Thank you so much. It's been so a pleasure, much. Erica. It's been a real big pleasure. I'm planting this as soon as I get home. Excellent. <laughs>